Shalom. I'm starting by giving all the praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahushai, Ba'ashim, Aruch HaKodash. Double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. And peace, blessings, and salutations unto the tabernacle of David, the old four elect that are scattered around the world. Shalom, wa broke thumb. And I'm entitled this lesson, Despise Not Prophesying. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, you'll get comments from Jake on the comment board, you know, denoting their, you know, aggravation for, you know, brothers constantly putting up, you know, shows and videos, you know, updating you on the MOTB, you know, going into the breakdown of the MOTB, the image of the beast. You know, every once in a while, you know, Jake, uh, you know, ask, you know, why do you always focus on this uh, prophecy? Or you'll also hear them say, you know, why always uh, focus on the so-called white man? Why are you always getting on vocab or, you know, who, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, Jake start to complain on the comment board. Well, the scriptures say, and I'm going to quote it again. That's why I'm entitled the video, despise not prophesying. Because um, if you really knew, it's not really us. It's the spirit that's on us. All right, the, the the heavenly Father put a certain spirit upon us to constantly uh, go into these particular topics. There's it, it is certain things in the spirit that the Lord wants repeated, so that Jay can be built up and edified, so he can be thoroughly understood in the Lord's will, His purpose. Because Jake is going to be left without an excuse when the time comes. So it's really not us. It's actually a, a spirit that constrains us to constantly uh, target these topics. So, uh, you know, you have this uh, brother here. I don't, I'm not sure who he is. But, um, you know, I guess his, uh, that's the name of his uh, channel, Chug Town uh, Finest. And I'm pretty sure brothers may have already done a lesson responding to this. But um, he says, y'all ain't reading. Priority should be on repentance and following the laws of the Most High. We do this and we are good. Why focus so much on the mark? And see, this is the, the problem with, with Jake. So you think that. You know, just alone repenting and keeping the law, which you're not keeping all the law. You know, we're not justified by the law in this sight. Now, we are rehearsing the righteous acts, but you really think you're in good standing with the Most High? But um, really, um, you're to focus on the prophecies because the prophecies are direct messages from the Heavenly Father. And we're to fear his, 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 his prophecies the same way we fear his instruction. This is why the prophets, you know, when they came on the scene, they were feared. Even the king had to listen to the prophet. All right? Because they had a very uh, vital message. All right? So, first scripture I'll start with. And let me get the one in the Apocrypha. Uh, and we're going to go to Sirach 39. And it says, uh, this is us uh, starting at verse 1. It says, but he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient Meaning you're gonna, you know, you're gonna read the um the the, the history contained in the the law, the, the 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 Tanakh, the prophets, and we as it is written uh, in one of the epistles, for whatsoever was written was a written a foretime for our learning. So we read these things understanding that that which have been is that which shall be, and there is no new thing under the sun. We read about what happened in 70 AD, dealing with uh, the abomination of desolation, 
how that was a time of uh, trouble, you know, for Jake back then. And we know that we're gonna it's gonna be a time of trouble since there has not been, all right, in this time. So, you know, we seek out the wisdom of all the ancient. You know, we look to what our forefathers done, the testimony of their faith. And it comforts us. So that's why we're to meditate. It says, and be occupied in prophecies. So that's what you're supposed to be doing. Be occupied, be busy in the prophecies. That's why it says in 2 Ezra 9, measure thou the time diligently in itself. What are we measuring? We're measuring the time by the prophecies so that we have the, indi the indications to know that, you know, our, that time is nigh, the, the day of our uh, redemption, our salvation. One of the ways we know is what? The MOTB. Because once that happens, we know that what's going to follow after that. The hour of temptation, we're going to get tried, our faith is going to be tested. You know, we're going to be interrogated, so on and so forth. And then also simultaneously, you're going to have, you know, World War Three, the third world's war. And anybody that took the the, the MOTB and, and worshipped the image, you know, use uh, amalgamated into this system and you just so into it that you worship it. Then, uh, yeah, you're going to you're going to uh, perish. And that fire, that's going to result from that war. When you read Isaiah 9, it talks about in the fifth verse that this this shall be uh, this battle shall be fought with fuels of fire. All right. So it's important to actually deal with the prophecies. That's why we focus on the mark. But we don't just focus on the mark. We focus on the other prophecies as well. But this is the main one. It's very urgent, you know, to take heed to because of the, the judgment that's prescribed for anyone that receives it. The Lord wants to make it very clear and he's making it very clear through his prophets. So guess what? You don't want to despise the prophesying because ultimately when you do that, when you get agitated or aggravated because you're hearing these prophecies constantly get taught about, you don't realize that you're despising the Most High who put the Spirit on His prophets to constantly prophesy these things. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 8. And it says, He therefore that despiseth despiseth not man, but the Most High who have also given us His Holy Spirit. So ultimately, it's His, His Spirit that's on us. All right, let me get uh, Job 32. In verse 8, and it says, But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. And that's how we're able to even understand these uh, prophecies. All right, because some of the prophets, they, had, they, they spoke in similitude because they can only describe what they saw in the future from the standpoint of the time that they lived in. So they would, you know, use certain things that they were familiar with in that time and compared to what they saw in the future dealing with the visions that they saw and they wrote it down so they would use similar to like they use arrow jeremiah when he saw the missiles he all he can uh, describe it was you know through an arrow an arrow being shot all right or and job saw it as a bow of steel You know, he, he talks about um, it coming out of the gall, all right, talking about um, the missile silo. But you have to be given the inspiration to understand those things. So let me jump down to verse um, 18, and it says, For I am full of matter, the spirit within me constraineth me. So showing you right there is the spirit of the Lord that constrains us. To constantly go into these breakdowns. Why are you always going into uh, the Edomites? Well, pro prophesy against Mount Seir as it is written. All the prophets prophesied about the destruction of Esau. If you've been paying attention, if you've been reading like the scriptures say, Blessed is he that readeth. 
they all prophesied the end of uh, of Edom. So why can't we uh, c carry on that, you know, the tradition of prophesying against this devil? All right. It says, behold, my belly is as wine, which have no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. All right. Let me get, let me read that in the NLT. Job 32 and 18, it says, for I am full of pent up words and the spirit within me urges me on. I am like a cask of wine without a vent, like a new wineskin ready to burst. I must speak to find relief. So let me give my answers. You know, so, you know, it's just a spirit that's on us, man. When the spirit, like uh, the apostles always uh, have this saying, you strike while the iron is hot. When the spirit gets on you, you know, you might have came across some information or article or another brother's video and it inspires you, it sparks you. And then you just go. Well, that's what it's like, man. And the MOTB just keeps coming up. Whether it be, a, you know, an update on, you know, the CBDC system. You know, uh, the fact that uh, the world is growing more and more cashless. That they're going to run out of money soon. All these BRICS nations, they all are de-dollarizing. Because we all know what this is going to lead to. Why is Nate constantly talk? Why is he even talking about that? And what is what relevance does that have to the MOTB? If it ain't dealing with the MOTB, why is he why is he bringing that up when he's been adamant all this time that the MOTB has nothing to do with the the, the C hip, which is going to be based on that same digital system? And then you see how he keeps switching it up, keep changing it. Obviously, it's a relevant topic that he has to keep updating his 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 breakdown. All right. So anyway, um, so let's go to First Thessalonians five and verse twenty, and it says, "Do not scoff at prophecies." That's that's what it says in the NLT. Let me see what the other translations say. Yeah, KJV despise not prophesyings. NIV do not treat prophecies with contempt. Just like you know, you're not to um take the the the, the name of the Mosai in vain. And why y'all always talking about the name? Why are y'all always defending the name? You know? Well, if you do that, then that seems like you're taking the name of the Lord lightly. You're holding his name with contempt. If you're so agitated that we're actually constantly talking about his name and defending it and giving praise to it. So the same thing, don't don't treat his prophecies lightly either. You're subtly doing so when you're aggravated by us constantly going into the MOTB or the image or uh, prophesying against Esau. All right. C uh, CSB, don't despise prophecies. Um, NASB 95, do not despise prophetic utterances. And the Lord is who gives us the utterance. It ain't it ain't even ourselves. All right. Um, do not treat prophecies with contempt. Down here it says uh, the D DBY translation. It says do not lightly esteem prophecies. You know, so you shouldn't even be asking such a question. Why focus on the mark so much? I mean, let the prophets do what the Lord is is inspiring them to do. And if you're not a prophet, if you're just a sideline guy, then you, by all means, need to fall back. If you know the scriptures, then you should be doing what we're doing. Because even as it's written in uh, in the law, the Lord rather that all his uh, uh, sons be prophets. Matter of fact, let me go to that. Let's go to uh, Numbers. Because you actually had elders who 
they got agitated that you had some young men prophesying in the camp. And they ran to Moses like, yo, you ain't going to stop them? Yeah, this is uh, Numbers 11. And I'm going to start at verse uh, 25. It says, And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him and took of the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and they and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad and the name of the other Madad. And the spirit rested upon them. So show you that the spirit of the Lord was upon those men. And they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Madad do prophesy in the camp. So Salakia was a young man, not an not a, uh, a elder. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, my Lord Moses forbid them. And Moses said unto him, envious thou for my sake with the, Mo with the most high that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. And, the, and Moses got him into the camp and he and the elders of Israel. So he pretty much checked him and said, man, the Lord, rather that you are all prophets and that he will put his spirit upon you. You know? So that shows you the importance of, of, of prophecy. We're not to despise prophesying. So don't get agitated every time you see a new MOTB update. Or us going into, you know, uh, World War III, the uh, Third World. All right? Updating you on, you know, geopolitical, uh, economical, you know, uh, situations all right going into uh, the affairs of of war of these wars the the proxy wars all right ukraine and russia and, and you know us and china over taiwan and you know all these different things who's supposed to go into these things it just so happened we primarily go into the mark more often so what And there's certain Jake that's still, you know, new. They're still browsing. You even got some people in these other camps that teach against what we teach concerning the MOTB. And they're starting, some of them are starting to come around. They're converting, man. Quiet as kept. So what we're doing is, is, is of the will of the Most High. When Noah, when Noah was out there constantly prophesying of, of, of the rain that was going to come, the, 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 which was the first death. I'm pretty sure people got uh, back then. They were scoffing Moses. They got tired of hearing it. And he was out there for, for a, a, a long period of time. Over a hundred years. Longer than we all been alive. But guess what? Once the, the first drip fell down, all those people, they were confounded. And it was too late. Should have listened. So the same thing, what we're teaching, hey, the second death is getting ready to happen. It's going to be by fire. And you're going to be partakers of it if you take that that C hip, that little implantable device that this devil is going to cause everybody to take in order to partake in his man's new uh, uh, financial system. In which he's trying to condition us now to it, getting rid of the, uh, the, the, the dollar, the, getting rid of uh, cash. Getting you to, you know, use digital uh, uh, forms of payment. And, and certain people already got it. So, yeah, man. Let me get this in uh, 1 Corinthians 14. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1, it says, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto the Most High, for no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification. So when we prophesy, we're, we're helping to build brothers and uh, sisters up, man. 
So they know they they know and understand the will of the Most High. It says, an exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue or language edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. All right. So even if, you know, you're speaking in a different language, you know, you interpret it and people receive it. Hell, I mean, YouTube did that job for us. That's how this word was able to be preached throughout the four corners of the earth without brothers having to, you know, go and travel, you know, because uh, the Internet, you know, did, you know, the work for us. You know, Lord, you know, put the spirit on them to create the Internet so that this would be, you know, one of the uh, vehicles to, you know, send this word out, man, to send that kite out, the gospel. And YouTube have, you know, has it to where, you know, you can uh, read subtitles, you can listen or read uh, what's being said in your primary language. And a lot of brothers all over the world was able to receive this word through the gift of really using the, the, the Internet to interpret what the apostles and elders and, and brothers in the camps here in the States were speaking. They heard the prophecies, all right, in their language. They had to be translated, of course. And, hey, the, the Spirit came, the Holy Spirit came upon those men, wherever they are in the world. All right. And that's how the, the, the Lord is uh, gathering the elect from the four corners, man. It's starting with gathering through the word. And like it says in Romans, have 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 they not heard? Yeah. Surely their, their, their sound went all throughout the earth. It's a lot. Yeah. Romans uh, 10 and 18. When I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. And that's why everybody, you know, around the world has access to this and they're able to, you know, the elect, of course, they're hearing it and they're they're receiving it and being sealed. So it's very important, man. Can't despise a prophecy. And if you don't like when we put these videos up, don't even watch them then. Matter of fact, unsubscribe. Do yourself a favor. Because this is all for serious-minded individuals. Because, you know, even back then, Jake always wanted to... They didn't really like to hear from the prophets because the, the prophets is going to tell the truth. And it's, it's usually not what they wanted to hear. They always want to hear smooth, smooth things. Y'all don't have no problem with us telling you to keep the commandments, you know, keep the law, the law, the law, like those other groups. You know, Jake don't get tired of hearing that. But when it comes to prophecy, why are you always going into that? This is Isaiah 30 and 9. It says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. And usually, you know, that's what Jake, you know, they get tired of, you know, listen to us. You know, they turn their ear at it. You know, Jake will get bored and they want to hear something new. You know, they usually gravitate towards, you know, the more world friendly uh, camps. That, you know, they go into marriage and they want to go into, you know, this and that. The, the the more comfortable Israelite groups. When you talk about the, the, the nastiness of the scriptures, when you talk about the, the lamentations, mourning and woe, Jake get uncomfortable. They don't really want to deal with that. They want to teach the things that make them feel more comfortable. Well, hey, you know, the Lord, he'll he'll give you what you're looking for. We're till but we're telling you the truth. The Lord said he would he he, he um 
that he pretty much raised up pastors according to his heart that will feed you with knowledge and, and, and wisdom. But if you know you want to hear the, the smooth stuff, well, the Lord he'll hand you over to those kind of prophets that's uh, uh, trying to heal you with with peace when there is no peace. And false prophets. Now Jeremiah twenty eight and eight, the prophets that have been before me before thee of old prophesied against many countries and, and great kingdoms of war of evil and of pestilence. That's just that's just how it been. This is uh, Micah 2 and 11. It says, If a man walking in the spirit and falsehood do lie, saying, I will prophesy unto thee of wine and of strong drink, he shall even be the prophet of this people. And you got a lot of dudes out there that's, you know, acting like they represent for the most high, you know, like they're chosen, like they're really prophets sent by the Lord, you know, putting themselves up in that, that office. But they're not getting you prepared for what the Lord is, is, is getting ready to fulfill. <clears throat> you know? They settled on a lease. So, you know, if you want to listen to them, then hey, be, you know, be our guest, man. But we're going to continue to prophesy what it what is written. And we're not to add to the to the uh the words of, of of the prophecies of this book nor take away from it or that comes with a penalty but we fear the most high and we're commanded to 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 warn you and if we don't warn you well this is what the scriptures say proverbs 24 and verse 11 it says if thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain if thou sayest, behold, we knew it not, do of not he that pondereth the heart consider it? You know, and hey, if, 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 if you don't think that that C hip has anything to do with the MOTB, then you're drawn into this. You're drawn. You're being drawn to the second death. All right. You, you're you going to die of that plague in Zechariah 14, where it says your, your, your eyes shall consume in your holes and your tongue shall melt in, in your mouth. All right, you you're you're drawn you're being drawn to death. All right, and if we knowing the truth say we didn't know, the Most High knows what we know. The Lord puts it in in, in your mind, you know of of what you know. It says, "And he that keep of thy soul doeth not he know it, and shall he and shall not he render to every man according to his works." All right, and if you're a prophet or a watchman and you fail to warn Israel, then guess what? Not only is that the, those Israelites, their blood is going to be upon them, but also the blood is going to be upon your head too. But if you didn't fail to do it, you thoroughly did your job, you did it consistently, then guess what? You're no longer uh, responsible. To, you, you wash the blood off your hands. This is why we do what we do. Because we were given that uh, responsibility. So, you know, like I said, if, if, if you're feeling any uh, way, you get agitated, you know, by uh, these constant videos on this particular topic, then by all means, man, just, you know, unsubscribe and don't even click on our videos. Don't even watch our lessons, man. Otherwise, hey, you know, is get edified. So, you know, I, I can go into, uh, you know, a few more precepts, but I think the point was made. All right. Pro despise not prophesying. All right. That's what we're going to continue to do until, you know, we up out of here, man. So with that, I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to you. I'll bash me out. Shalom.